Well, this was a video that wasn't going to happen. I saw a silly set of figures and I posted about it on Twitter. Then everyone absolutely loved what they were seeing with it, and you know what? It wasn't expensive. 60 bucks, so screw it. Worth looking at it just for the novelty. Plus, if I ever do a What's the Best Bruticus, I can include this. Names suck, so I'm just calling this Swindlecus. Before I forget, like I keep doing, I'm still trying to hit 10k subscribers by the 8th of August. And what with my subscriptions over the last week basically stopping, that goal suddenly became a lot more distant. Seriously, my subscriber growth this month when compared to the last is down 200, or one third of what it had been. So, if you enjoyed this video by the end, please consider subscribing, and try to share the videos around. Starting out in alt mode this time, because they both come that way, and it's actually for once harder to go into robot mode when transforming these than it is into vehicle mode. That's pretty atypical. All right, roll call. We got Brawl, 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 and T-Pain. Yep, this is Bruticus Oops All Brawls Edition, coming with a strange giant swindle head that has dreads and doesn't transform further. What's funny is that you might think that these are all the same figure over and over since all the tanks function almost identically, but you'd be wrong. Every last one of these goes out of their way to be unique. I mean, they aren't impressively different, but like the way the feet fold out on each and every last one of these is never the same. I think they pretty much changed each of them just to say that they did it, and most of these guys are constructed with nothing in the way of unique concepts, but for 60 bucks, they are trying to not just re-release a bunch of rehashes. Hell, you'd think for 60 bucks, these would be made out of trash and the tolerances would be terrible. For reference, those tiny Sharpticons I showed off in the last video were 40 bucks, so two-thirds the price of this, and if you stack all three of them together, one of these tanks is still bigger, but all of these are still actually respectably weighty, and made of relatively thick plastic. Hell, at its thinnest, these things tend to be thicker than the amount Hasbro uses for their clear plastic. So if each of these was just a brick that did nothing, the price would still be justified in my eyes. Yet they sculpted all of these as individual tanks in unique plastic colors, and there's at least a respectable amount of paint on each member. Like whoever made this clearly respected their audience, and it makes me more fond of this set than I probably should be. Then again, it's a big chibi Bruticus with Swindle's head, so I don't know what level of fondness should be appropriate, but I feel like it's pretty high. I don't know enough about tanks to really tell you what any of these is supposed to be for sure, outside I think maybe these two are American tanks, though this one may be British. I think this one is French, this one may be Japanese, and these two seem like they could be a bit of a yikes and actually be Nazi tanks. To be fair, I think these are all supposed to be World War II tanks. You know what, I might be the only Transformers reviewer who just does not give half a shit about vehicles. I could not tell you the make or model of anything on this planet. When I see Chevys, every time I think they're Toyotas because the logo looks like a T. I am vehicle illiterate, so forgive me for not listing off each and every one of these tanks by name. Question of the video, without looking them up, do you know what each of these tanks is supposed to be? Every tank is fully featured, having rotating turrets with cannons that have elevation and depress. Though, this particular one is a bit awkward when it comes to the rotation, since it's having the whole turret half fall off the tank, and none of them have any method by which they can roll. And I find this one with the antenna sticking off the back very frustrating because that's just a twig begging to get snapped off. The paint on them is mostly just model numbers and key details, like the sides of the tracks, but there's just enough of it to make these stand out, and they feel pretty at home with Green Army Men. So these are all good little tanks. They don't exactly have any kind of function or weapon storage outside of being engines of war, but for what they are, $10 per super deformed tank, they are a really good time. Transformations on them kinda suck though. Far be it from me to talk shit on these when they're so cheap, but fuck is this the part of the video I'm dreading of filming while writing this script. Getting these into robot mode is so clunky. They all almost work identically, with the head stored in the turret, the legs folding out from the back half, and the arms being formed from the treads, but each one of these does things just slightly different to be a super special butterfly, and I can't tell if that actually helps or just annoys me more. Please try to imagine doing the same thing six times, but then it's not the same thing, and now you realize you're in the middle of a dream because none of this makes sense. I have a swindle that looks like Bruticus, but made out of only tanks that don't look like tanks, that are all the same, but they're not, and they are all incredibly simple, but very hard to transform. And they are nice, heavy, and big, but each figure is only 10 bucks, and it's shipped to me from China by the Show Z store in two days when it usually takes the better part of a month for them to get the figures to you. You are asleep right now. You are dreaming. Or at least, I am. How is this real? And the end results kinda suck. I'm gonna be honest here, the individual robot modes are easily the worst part of this whole figure. Almost none of these look finished, they have giant gaps, their proportions are whack, most of them have backpacks that aren't backpacks. I can't get over this. Every other figure since the dawn of time would have had these hinged down, so they are mounted on the characters' backs like this. Not here though, here the backpacks start at the napes of their necks and then just go up and up from there. Their arms can't even get that far over their heads. Not Brawl seems like it was meant to be some kind of weapon, but on the rest of them it just seems like a mistake. Or like they didn't give a shit. And Swindle's head is still just Swindle's head. Speaking of heads, these are terrible. It feels like one, these are all heads from different characters, and two, they don't really feel finished. They get some accent colors, but much of the key details of the faces just get left in blank toolroom gray. 
Not Brawl looks like it has Long Haul's head. Other Not Brawl looks something like Swindle. Not Slot looks like it kind of got the correct head. But Vortnots looks like it also has Onslaught's head. Not Swindle has Bruticus's head, which is both hilarious and would have made too much sense as almost anyone else's head, or if it had been everyone else's head. And then the sixth ranger's head here, I don't even think I can call this unfinished. It's more like it's unstarted. They basically painted a dot on the forehead and then left the entire thing in blank featureless tool room gray. This guy only forms the torso of the combiner and has the head that is implied to be the one that gets upgraded into the giant swindle one. It's not like he's the team leader or anything, so why should we give a shit about his head? So these robot modes are all kind of trash. They actively make me like this set less. None of them look finished. None of them even look good. Did I mention how awkward all these guys are? At least the tank modes look like metal slugs. I mean, look at them. They don't look like the bad guys here to kick your ass and take your lunch money. They look like the chess club, here to lose all their money gambling on chess because they aren't even good at that, because that would involve winning and they've never won anything in their lives. These guys come with a bunch of guns that are kind of low detail and oversized, but they combine into a giant super blaster, so I can't really fault them. And as for other accessories, swindle head, hands and feet, and then purple bits. I'm not going to go over posing on each one of these, I'll just do one since I literally can't tell if any of these has any joints or ranges that are different than the others. They aren't as bad as this as you might think, they look like they suck, and their shoulders sure do, but the head has more than normal range, shoulders pull like a 5, you can kind of fake them for more, though they do go forward just fine, normal 90 elbows, jerking off action, back crunch, waist swivel, hips kick forwards and backwards just fine, but out to the side is really limited, maximum knees, and toe action. Surprising, right? Like, it's not bad at all. I expected shit, and I got okay. The shoulders are weirdly terrible, but everything else is decent to good. After the transformation sucks so bad, you might expect combination on these guys to ache like ball cancer, but you'd be wrong. For the most part, it's fun and intuitive if you can look at the box, though I needed directions for the torso bot, as you can't see him at all behind a giant parts forming piece, so I had no idea what he was supposed to do to form the center of the mode. And the parts forming is kind of a bummer. This is far from the worst parts forming I've ever experienced, but it does mean that you need to keep a few huge chunks handy if you want this to be an option, which you really should. And now you can see why I've been filming this in the big light box, because while this is not exactly giant, it is still a pretty hefty boy. It's bigger than Siege Jetfire. And this feels like one of the sturdiest combiners of all time. Not only does he feel incredibly dense, but he's just really well put together. Except for the swindle head. That kind of really reeks. It seems like it should peg on a bit better than it does, but it's so tenuous, it kind of feels like you're just bouncing it on top. Like, I can shake this thing off without turning it sideways. No other part of him wants to fall off or snap in half, except for maybe the antenna on his wrist. This feels like the kind of figure you could throw at a small animal so you can claim its delicious meats. Though, the left arm likes to droop, and there is some gnarly hollowness in his forearms. But there is just something so charming about this thing. It has the proportions of a toddler and the giant head of Swindle, so it looks like if a particularly greedy baby stood up. It's a little long in the waist and a little short in the thighs, but if this were just a statue, I'd still be pretty happy with it. This has big Funko energy, and I'm not sure if that makes me like it less. But if you have a collection of those, you can probably display this with them and no one would notice. I keep wondering if this has any place in my collection, and then I look at it all combined up and I go, yeah. So I think I'll be keeping this for at least a while. I have been considering giving it away at the end of the video, but now I think it will stick around at least until the What's the Best Bruticus, if that ever winds up happening. The head is awesome, a weird baby swindle mush on top of his shoulders as big as a normal person's fist. My hands, being giant, dwarf him obviously, but I'm a freak. Gotta say, the Giver gem in his forehead is a bit strange, and the paint seems to have worn off the front of it, making it look like an eye, so that's kinda creepy. I honestly can't say if I still would have bought this had it had the normal Bruticus head. The choice to make it swindle was both absurdly weird and inspired. Posability on this is actually remarkably good for what it is. Like I said before, you got no range on the head, but the shoulders can pull more than a 90, elbows can too, though they retract a bit when you do, making the arms look super short, advanced hands with multi-jointed fingers and a separate thumb, if you remove the crotch plate, you can get a waist swivel, hips are pretty restricted forwards, barely out to the sides and not at all going back, knees pull less than a 45, and feet with a good toe down and a rocker, though you have to mostly pull them out of their sockets for that. So yeah, this actually poses pretty averagely for a combiner. The head is worthless for what it is, but almost everything else is pretty much average for the gimmick, or better than normal. And for 60 bucks, this thing is a steal. When all said and done, Combiner Wars Gestalts were actually more expensive than this, and this is significantly bigger, better built, and funnier. And it's almost like half the price. This is a novelty item plain and simple, but it's a really enjoyable one at a really cheap price. If you are at all interested, I say go for it. This is fun. The base robots aren't any good. Honestly, they're kind of a negative for the whole set, not even fit for children to play with because they're so frustrating, but every other aspect of this is a blast you'd have to be an irredeemable grumpy pants to not enjoy. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.